In 25 years, the sport of Supercross has grown to provide a unique blend of entertainment and racing to millions of fans nationwide. For 25 years, the top athletes in the world have strived for one common goal, the number one plate. In 1974, the sport of Supercross moved indoors for the first time to the Houston Astrodome. That event marked the beginning of the Supercross series. Over the next few years, the venues that define what Supercross is all about were established. Places like Los Angeles and Daytona Beach, like Dallas, Pontiac, and Houston. And by 1979, the series had grown steadily from a three-race beginning to 12 rounds of grueling competition. Champions in the 70s were the true iron men of the sport. Guys like Pierre Carsmakers, Jim Ellis, Jim Leinert, and Bob Hurricane Hanna. Hanna was the first rider to win three championships in a row, claiming the title in 77, 78, and 79. Hanna's never-say-die attitude made him the first superstar of Supercross. He led the sport into the 80s with his championship riding style and his flamboyant personality. The 80s marked the emergence of Mike Bell, Donny Hansen, and the bomber Mark Barnett. The competition was intense. The bikes were getting faster and the tracks were getting tougher. It was 1983 when a guy named David Bailey was crowned a champion. Bailey is known as one of the most naturally talented riders of all time. Johnny O'Mara, the O Show, won the title in 84. And when the 85 season started, all eyes were focused on the fact that the sport was enjoying the best quality of riding talent ever. Anyone could win. Guys like Ron Lachine, Brock Glover, Jeff Ward, and Rick Johnson had risen to the top of the sport. But seasoned veterans like Hannah and Barnett wanted the crown. In the end, the 1985 champion was Jeff Ward. And from then until 1989, the Supercross champions were back and forth in a two-man war. A guy named Rick Johnson stole the number one plate from Jeff Ward in 86. Then Ward took it right back in 87. Johnson returned the favor in 1988, taking the number one plate back again. Those years are still talked about today as some of the best racing the sport has ever seen. In 1989, a new breed of Supercross rider would take the sport's highest honor. Jeff Stanton was champion. He backed it up in 1990 with his second championship. And after playing runner-up to Frenchman Jean-Michel Bale in the 91 series, the Bulldog Stanton dug deep and took young Damon Bradshaw to the final round before claiming the title in 1992, thus becoming the sport's second three-time champion. It was 1993, and Supercross had enjoyed tremendous growth over the years. The schedule had been capped at 16 races that traveled to the top cities in America. 1993 was the beginning of a rider's career that would make him the best ever. With 10 event wins, he claimed his first championship in his rookie year. 1994 was a repeat, 95, a three-peat, and in 1996, Jeremy McGrath won every race but one for his fourth straight title. The only rider to win four titles, the rider with the most race wins in history, and the only guy to win every race but one in a season. Jeremy McGrath took Supercross into the mainstream of American society. He had won everything there was to win, broken all the records. But in 1997, it was time for a new champion. The definition of heart is Jeff Emmy. He was actually a veteran of Supercross by the time he finally figured out how to beat McGrath. Battling every race of the year, Emmy secured the championship that he so desperately wanted in 1997. But the 1997 season turned out to be a very brief reprieve for all riders, not referred to as the king. Jeremy McGrath stormed back in convincing fashion in 1998 as he captured his fifth Supercross championship and garnered countless records along the way in classic McGrath fashion. Mac was truly back. The status quo remained intact for the next two years, as Showtime McGrath won both the 99 and 2000 Supercross titles. Everyone wondered if there would ever be a faster or more dominant rider than the seven-time champion. In 2001, their answer came in the form of an incredibly talented rider named Ricky Carmichael. The Florida native's impending domination had been foreshadowed by an illustrious amateur career that brimmed with eye-opening performances. Carmichael started racing Supercross in 1997 in the 125 class, where he'd finished third in his very first season. 
The following year, he captured the 125 East title before moving up to the 250 class in 99. But Carmichael struggled with the larger and more powerful 250cc bike throughout the 1999 campaign. He crashed often and would finish no better than 16th place. The next season was a small improvement. Carmichael was more consistent and in control and placed a respectable fifth. The learning curve for the bigger bike was steep, but after applying all his energy to master it, Ricky finally emerged as the rider everyone knew he would be. The 2001 season was a flashback to his dominant amateur days as Ricky soundly defeated McGrath, taking 14 main event wins to Jeremy's two, including rattling off 13 straight wins to end the season. Ricky not only stole Jeremy's title, but also tied his records for wins in a row and wins in a season. But the question remained, would Carmichael defeating McGrath be a one-time occurrence, much like Jeff Emig's pilfering of the number one plate in 97? The next season, Ricky proved that his 2001 championship was no mere aberration, as he captured his second consecutive Supercross title. After a shaky start that saw him crash out of the race in the opening round, Ricky mounted a comeback of epic proportions. No other rider had ever come back from dead last to finish first until now. Carmichael clinched the 2002 title by round 15 in Salt Lake City, solidifying his reputation as a force to be reckoned with. Perhaps now is the most exciting time to be a Supercross fan. For nearly three decades, the sport has developed into a national coast-to-coast -coast touring series, the fastest growing motorsport in the world. Never has the cast of riders been more illustrious, centered around the winningest rider in Supercross history, Jeremy McGrath, and the ultra-dominant Ricky Carmichael, who is becoming just as hard to dethrone as McGrath was in his heyday. Add in the superstars of tomorrow, like motocross prodigy Travis Pastrana and up-and-coming rider James Stewart, whose amateur record surpasses even Carmichael's, and you have a winning formula for decades to come. Supercross champions serve as a roadmap to the evolution of the sport. As one title reign ends, another has already begun, and each one is always destined to be better than the last.